This is going to be your guide for tips and tricks in LEGO Fortnite. So I made a beginner guide. If you want to know how to get not root and marble, it's in there. But now we're going to start getting into the things other people are struggling with. Because in my desert guide, turns out a lot of people can't find the desert. Now that's going to be a part of the game because you have random seeds. So maybe you get lucky and you spawn right next to a desert. Maybe you get unlucky and you can't find it forever. Now, fortunately, there's a method in game to finding the biomes that you need to go to next, and that's by talking to your villagers. So if you're here to chat, you just keep on talking and they'll say which direction. Oh, to go to a dry valley? Head south. And it's going to be the same thing for the other biomes, but sometimes you just get lucky. I can see the snowy mountain over there, so when I'm ready to move on, I'm just going to head off in that direction. Now, the next tip is for your village and village upgrades. You want to upgrade your village as soon as you get the resources, but a village level might be an issue, which is why I have so many grills scattered about. Workstations contribute a lot towards your village level. So if you have extra resources you don't really you aren't really using, go and build a workstation, put it down. So let's put down a few workstations and see how much they contribute. All right, crafting bench, not a lot. Lumber mill, that's going to be a pretty good jump. Same thing for the grills. So it seems like depending on your resources, if you have a lot of extra wood, then you want to make lumber mills instead of the grills since grills take so much granite. And eventually you're going to get there. It's just going to take a lot of resources. Now, I thought something like a loom would give a really big boost because it takes so many resources and a lot of them are rare. But you put down the loom and I think that's less than a lumber mill. So really just get granite. If you have an excess of granite, don't throw it away. Don't get it lost in some chest. Just put down grills or lumber mills. So yeah, upgrading your village is really good. Also, even though it's more in the late game, my advice is to not waste the 12 copper bars on a longsword because the seven damage really doesn't matter and it's not like you get an insane amount of durability. It's a lot better to save those copper bars so you can upgrade your bench as soon as possible to progress even further. It's a survival crafting game. You're just going from one upgrade to the next. The faster you do it, the more content you get access to, so it's better to min-max early. I also recommend crafting a glider as soon as possible. I was stubborn. I looked at all this stuff. I'm like, I don't want to deal with fabrics and textiles and stuff. I don't want to make a glider. It's kind of expensive. That's a lot of wool and silk. Well, that was a mistake because the second you can make the glider do it. The world gets really big really quick and using the geysers to travel faster is going to save an incredible amount of time and just make you feel better about exploring the world. Okay, so everyone knows that if you get a roller to roll into water, it'll automatically die and that makes it really easy for farming. But one thing I didn't know is that you could find rollers next to water in the desert. But one thing I had a problem with early on was finding a sand roller in the desert because I had a pure desert spawn, but apparently rivers can spawn in the desert. Also, you can find an oasis. So my recommendation is even though you might have to travel a long ways to find water in the desert, it's worth it. You are going to need a ton of sand roller shells. Just get like a stack. And before you get the crazy tool upgrades that make these things easy, that's just way better. So that, that will definitely help you out with your progression. So don't think like, oh man, I'm in a desert, water's rare or too hard to find or might not even be in my world or something. Nah, just, just take the trip. It's worth it. Also, that means you can spot out some other markers because you're going to need to find caves in the desert and the resource grind is pretty intense. One cave probably won't give you everything you need to progress to the next stage of the game. So the more you explore the desert, the more you have landmarks chart out, the better. Also with other rollers early on, if you can't reliably find them near water, using a shield will block them and then you can do extra damage with a pickaxe. So that could be an easy way of taking out rollers early on. Now this is a upgraded pickaxe, but if you need the first couple of shells, it's another way of doing it, even though water is just better. Movement tip. You might have noticed I don't have a stamina meter. I also play without temperature. I think they're stupid gimmicks that artificially increase the annoyance of a game and nothing for like the difficulty. It just seems like unnecessary grinding for totems or temperature food. But if you do play with the stamina meter, one thing you can do is jump and attack and that's going to help swimming a lot and extend your stamina in the water by an insane amount. I don't know how much, but yeah, the movement here is actually really crazy. It also shows that if you're going downriver for exploration, it can be really fast, especially if you don't have a stamina meter. So something to keep in mind. 
Now, those are the big tips I've discovered for myself or seen people talk about in the comments of my videos, but I do want to just kind of cover everything for this video, so maybe one stupid little thing I'm about to mention is something you missed, such as beating up bushes, also a lot faster with an axe. If you need a lot of vines for torches or cords, and trust me, you're going to need a lot of cords, you can break bushes, you also get some wood, which is really nice, because another stupid little tip is to always get more resources than you need. It's a survival crafting game. If you can, craft two of the highest tier axe. Craft two of the highest tier pickaxe. It also kind of depends on where the caves are in your world. If you have a cave kind of nearby, it's not the worst thing if you have to go back. But if you need to do a lot of exploration, make sure you have tons of extra tools and then clear out the entire cave. There's nothing worse than being short knot root or marble for a necessary tool, village, or crafting table upgrade. Except for flex wood. As long as the desert is nearby, you can just run over and chop down a cactus, and a lot of things just need the flex wood rod to function. So yeah, you just get that for free in the desert once you have the pickaxe unlocked. But then the forest axe, oh man, I don't have knot root, so now I'm behind on all the flex wood I need. Just make sure you get a little bit extra of stuff. And this is where the villagers come into play, that even though you think, okay, I don't need a villager on the lumber mill just getting me stupid things I don't need. No, make sure a villager is on the lumber mill. That way you have a few not root rods being generated just in case you miss something. Also, if the desert in your world is far away, just build a new village. You know, just kind of make another command post, and that's also where the extra resource is going to be. You can build up that village, you can get all the tools and crafting and stuff that you need over there. And it's going to be nice to not have to run across the entire world just to get a little bit of extra resources that were in a different biome. And then another stupid tip, build stairs. It seems like stairs are the intended way of getting verticality early on, if not through most of the game. So if there's like a resource at the top of the cave, well, you can just explore the cave and find wood, or you should already have an excess of wood. And then you use that wood to build structures to make it through the cave and get the resources that you need. Same thing for the desert because the amber gets really high up. So you need to have a lot of just extra regular wood for building. It makes sense because it's Fortnite. It also just kind of feels weird because it's not like Minecraft where, oh, I have an entire stack of blocks and I can just go and put things under myself and then build up that way. You can pillar up in this game and it is kind of finicky, but then it just takes way more resources because each of these foundations is one wood. These stairs only cost two wood. They also give you platforms to build off of and you can just zigzag them up if you need a lot of height. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just me to where it feels weird. It's like, oh, is there, there has to be a different solution than just kind of like building an arbitrary structure just to get something at the top of a cave. But I think the simplest solution is the actual intended solution here. And maybe some other people from No Build Fortnite are struggling with this concept as well. Unfortunately, I don't have any tips for inventory management. Bones are useless. That's kind of it. But you kind of need a lot of everything else. Feathers, well, the crossbows are actually really strong, so you need to have the extra resources for arrows. But then you just kind of get cluttered with things. You can throw away the other pickaxes and random monster drops. And just otherwise it's stupid things. Like, yeah, build an extra chest. Throw some spare wood into a lumber mill. That way you have the planks. And then you just dump stuff off and make a mess of it. So unless this is your first survival crafting game, you've already embraced chaos or purity. There's people that do things the right way. Every workstation is going to have its own house and its own storage system, and they're going to spend the extra resources to get a bigger chest instead of flooding with smaller chests. And then there's the min-maxers like me. I only put things down for utility and convenience. I don't care about appearances. But I will say, planning out your organization early on will help. Like, at least make designated areas for all of your workstations and give each of them their own personalized chest. That way you can just drop something off and not have it get completely lost. This uh, beginning area, yeah, that kind of messed me up for a bit because I just have nonsense all over the place. Multiple stacks of items that can then be consolidated that I'm just never going to use or care about. So from a pure chaos player, it's actually worth it to make your village organized and nice from the start. And I think that's actually a meaningful tip, depending on how you play your survival crafting games. Except for this, I don't know what you can do about that. Put this in the corner somewhere because you're still going to need to put a ton of lumber mills and grills to get the level for your base. And then maybe small tips that people stumble into for themselves, like you put up a wall and then you can put up a roof and that's how you can cover up something. So you, you don't have to make one of the preset buildings. You can just make your own little creative building shack areas. And 
again, depending on how you set up your base, you can actually make it nice where it's like, oh, this will hold a chest and a workstation and maybe you can put another wall around it. Maybe you can put in a better area in the village instead of having to run back and forth to all of these weird areas just to get some resources. Oh yeah, and last tip, if something isn't working, just try turning it off and on again. You load into a world, your torch isn't rendered, take it out of your offhand, put it back in, everything should be fine. Same thing for the shields. Also with your villagers, if they're out adventuring with you and then they glitch out for some reason, I had Hayseed get stuck in an attack animation and then just sit there and look at enemies and not try to swing at them at all. I just left the server, came back, it worked, and having a villager with you on an adventure is very powerful. Also give them tools, they're going to help out with fighting and mining resources. Also from my experience, it seems like you can only have one villager per workstation, so if you need to have two things being made then you need to have two workstations or else they kind of like get in each other's way and it glitches out the progression and then sometimes i've had to like break the workstation put it back down reassign the job so basic troubleshooting for yourself is going to be the first thing you want to do before crying in some youtube comments about something that isn't working that might also just be like broken in the game and not fixed yet there we go guys hope you all enjoyed this video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching